So I'm David Helgeson and I'm the senior gardener for Volunteer Park Conservatory and uh, I uh, work for Seattle Parks and Rec. Uh, we're one of four uh, specialty gardens that are run by Seattle Parks and Rec. So everything about the plants. So we uh, care for and maintain the collections um, that we have on site in our uh, production greenhouses as well as, as the interior of the conservatory and the display spaces. Uh, making sure that um, uh, it's a pleasant visitor experience when people come. And uh, there's a, a small group of us uh, uh, employed by parks, but uh, a larger body of volunteers. And um, it's certainly a group effort. It is a group effort and yeah. it is such a delightful experience. Thank you for all that work. And I want to ask you a little bit more about volunteers. But first, I know the conservatory is maintained through a very special collaboration between Seattle Parks and mm -hmm. Recreation and Friends of the Conservatory, yeah. a nonprofit. So tell us about that, that working relationship. Well, it's, it's a really unique relationship, uh, a very long standing relationship with uh, Friends of the Conservatory. Um, their history reaches back over a 40-year span, and they have been involved in uh, so much um, good effort that uh, keeps the conservatory um, accessible and, and open to the public, and um, everything from uh, advocating for restoration uh, work that has gone on over the past 30 years, and, and uh, just to the daily activity, the things that are important, for access like social media and, and just the, the on-site presence mm -hmm. um, that, that um, uh, is necessary to you know, make people feel welcome when they come here and, and provide everything from wonderful programming uh, activities to, for young people, for old people, and everybody in between. It's, it's just a, a wonderful collaborative effort. It's, it takes a village. Yeah, it takes a village to yeah, keep right. such a beautiful yeah, place. Yeah, right. How long have you been working here? So I started here in 1989, and uh, with a short interval at one of our other facilities, um, I've been here that entire time. So, um, You've uh, devoted going on, your going, life to this yeah, place in a way. Yeah, pretty much uh, my entire adult life, most of it, uh, to, to being here. I've been here for 35 years, but it's just been such a privilege and uh, honor to be here. I just, uh, it, as far as a career goes, I, uh, for, for someone in horticulture, this has just been uh, my dream job and um, I, I've loved every minute of it. 35 years, wow, that's a huge history and the conservatory is about 111 years mm -hmm. old. Yep. And I know it's gone through several major restorations over this time. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about these restorations, the ones that you've been a part of as well. Sure, okay. Well, so originally um, the building was, was built from a kit that came um, from back east uh, in 1912, it was erected and it was uh, a steel frame with a wooden uh, structure that held the glass. The glazing system was um, uh, all swamp cypress, uh, which was a traditional uh, material that was used, wood material that was used for greenhouse construction. Mm -hmm. And over a period of many years, um, that the wooden portion of the, uh, of the structure uh, began to deteriorate uh, to a point where it was in we were in jeopardy of losing it. Um, and uh, that was uh, about the time that the Friends of the Conservatory came, uh, came to the rescue and, and assisted the city with getting on track with the, with the uh, initial phases of restoration. So um, uh, starting in earnest about uh, 19, early 90s, um, the, with the um, first phase of restoration being the uh, Palm House, mm -hmm. Um, the lower portion and then the upper portion of the dome. Which was the original house as yes. well. Yes. The decision was made to replace the wooden portion of the structure with aluminum. Mm -hmm. And um, they were very particular about maintaining the, all of the wonderful characters uh, of the, of the uh, wooden decorative elements. Mm -hmm. So all of the little cornices and, and door frames and, and panels and things that were um, that gave the structure some character. Uh, we're very fortunate to, to be one of, of a small handful here on the West Coast, the most notably 
uh, Seattle, Tacoma, Wright Conservatory in Tacoma, and then uh, the Conservatory of Flowers in, in San Francisco. The conservatory has closed its doors a few times mm -hmm. over its history yep. to the public, and one of those times was during COVID for 18 months. So yep. tell us about how life was here during that time. Sure. Well, it was interesting for us not to have, I mean, we're all about our audience, about the public, and, and um, we have a very uh, prescribed um, day in terms of the maintenance that we do that, to get the place ready for uh, our visitors to come at 10 o'clock. And, and the life of the place. Yeah, right? yeah. So we're, we're always here early, busy behind the scenes, doing a lot of stuff in the morning before we open to the public. And um, so not having our audience was, was really odd. It was, uh, uh, but we decided early on that we were gonna just treat it as if we were gonna open the doors at 10 o'clock. And the collection was just maintained during those 18 yeah. months. Right, because um, our, our collections as living collections require care every day. So we, we just decided that we were gonna maintain the displays. We were gonna, the production cycles for our display take uh, months to prepare. We just decided to kind of keep the ball rolling. We didn't know uh, really when we would reopen to the public, so um, we just decided that, that it could be any day. And so uh, we just, to keep ourselves kind of on our toes, and two thirds of it is, is about caring for the collections anyway. So um, the preparation for display and all of that how has that coming back to normal been for, for you as a senior gardener in the conservatory? Um, well, it was really exciting having the public back and then being able to have our wonderful friends group back on site. Um, they, had all, they had been working behind the scenes, uh, mostly from home during that period of time and um, having everybody back on site. You mentioned earlier that the conservatory has different houses. We're here at the seasonal house. There's also the bromelia firm, palm and cacti houses. Mm -hmm. And you are um, in charge of the seasonal one, which is changing from season to season. So tell us a little bit more about maintaining a, a life plant collection that is also changing. I, I say that the seasonal house is sort of typical of how uh, the collection is utilized throughout the conservatory and the various houses that our, our displays um, rely on a very robust rotation of plants from our, our back houses or our support greenhouses where we do the production and the propagation of plants uh, and in this case seasonal production of plants for display. Uh, roughly every two months um, the theme of the seasonal house changes a little bit. Um, this is kind of a temperate house, if you will. So a lot of the plants that you see in here would be plants that we could grow outdoors in the Northwest, mm -hmm. uh, are, are hardy to the most extent or, or marginally hardy. We do incorporate some, some tender, annual, perennial, tropical things on occasion. But um, right now we've got, um, we're, we're sort of in our gliding into our late summer, early fall mode. And one of the crops that we're, um, that is in production at the moment are chrysanthemums. So we do a big uh, chrysanthemum uh, exhibit every year that culminates in a wonderful three-day um, exhibition at the end of October. Um, and uh, that's done with one of our partner uh, groups, um, the Evergreen Chrysanthemum Association. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is a, is a um, old venerable group in the area that uh, is all about chrysanthemums and exotic chrysanthemums. Um, as, and that'll just be sort of this crescendo as we go and you, further. And they start in. changing and you don't notice and then one day you come in and yep, it's a yep. whole different place. And what do you do with the plants that are no longer here? So, so a lot of the plants that we uh, produce are plants that are kept as specimen plants. So um, like our, our uh, collection of perennial things. Mm -hmm. um, well, just to describe a few of the plants that are in here. So um, we have collect large collections of perennials, for instance, that are used in the seasonal house for uh, display throughout spring and summer. And those will get uh, taken back to our nursery. They'll get divided and stored for the winter and then um, brought back into production uh, in the early spring and then used uh, sort of strategically throughout the season. Um, so that's everything from like the hostas 
uh, the foliage hostas and the grasses and um, let's see what else do we have in right now. Well, the chrysanthemums will be part of that. The plants that once, once they're finished are then used for stock plants for next year's cycle. So we'll, we'll store those plants mm -hmm. and take cuttings from them the following spring. So it's just this kind of rotation of... of um, and you see a yearly planning behind all of the workings here, yeah. really. And yeah. it's beautiful, as you also mentioned, the collaboration that happens with other uh, plant societies and mm -hmm. how they have been part of the conservatory's history for, well, almost the 111 years yeah. it has. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about volunteers. So okay. uh, what's the working with volunteers here like? This is called Volunteer Park Conservatory for a reason. So. Yeah. Yeah, I've always thought that was a wonderful uh, uh, thing that, that we have this uh, beautiful park and that it's volunteer park and it's just appropriate because um, particularly here um, th with the uh, um, city administrating so much in terms of this vast park system, it really takes a lot of community support and, and volunteer support to make it happen. And um, I think Volunteer Park Conservatory is just a wonderful example of how that works at its best. Um, mm -hmm. We have a, just a terrific, the Friends of the Conservatory are just a terrific group. And they provide all of the support that um, it is that it's hard for us to provide. Um, so there's a small gardening staff uh, that is provided by the city. Um, and we're, our time is uh, completely encumbered dealing with plants and display and all of the stuff that it takes to do the horticultural part. So all of the important stuff like the social media part of it, the public outreach, community outreach, um, the programming, you know, like so when you come there's fun activities and different like things going on. Yeah, engagement and, and community engagement, everything from the gift shop to plant sales to you name it. Where it really uh, gets personal for me is the, just the wonderful people that come to volunteer here and in so many different capacities. So I have the privilege to work with a handful of uh, very dedicated volunteers on a weekly basis. Three in particular that come to mind, uh, I have a wonderful uh, um, volunteer, Brenda Betcher, who um, comes on Mondays. Um, and she, she has comes, come for 25 years. Yeah, she's you were she's been coming me. for about 25 years. Wow. She was a she was a head nurse for for her entire career at Harborview, one of our local hospitals. And um, when she she's just one of those uh, special people that that um, wants to stay active, wants to be involved in in uh, fun things. And she comes and supports me every every Monday. Uh, helps me maintain this collection and and. Uh, so Brenda's wonderful, and then I've got a, a pair from uh, that come to us from one of our allied garden groups, the uh, uh, Northwest Orchid Society, and uh, Mike and Lillian show up on Mondays as well, and they've been doing that for years, and um, they help provide stewardship for our orchid collection, which is one of our legacy collections. And it's an award-winning one. Yeah, an well. award-winning, uh, it's the Kleiss Orchid Collection, um, it, was, it was originally donated by uh, Anna Kleiss, uh, original core of the collection back in the 20s. And um, it has become, uh, it's a legacy collection. It's one of our signature collections as far as, um, you know, something that we're very proud of that we maintain to a high degree. For over 100 years. Yeah, for, for over 100 years now. We assign each of the staff members to, to a collection and, and they're the, uh, people with the knowledge and the expertise to help. Um, we're a relatively, as far as botanical gardens and, and institutions go, we're a relatively small operation, so our, our focus is slightly different. It, it's more, the focus is more on ornamental side mm -hmm. of horticulture, and what we try to do is to uh, highlight the environmental stories, the things that are important to people to learn about in terms of earth stewardship and plants in particular um, come into play, at, particularly nowadays with, with uh, pressure from global warming and, and climate change and all of the concerns that uh, impact mm -hmm. um, our environment and plant communities and people uh, across the globe. It, um, the opportunities that we have to help highlight those 
stories and, and how people can be involved in, in making a difference uh, in terms of the way that we live our lives and, and uh, interact with, with our, the world around us. Um, uh, we're able to select plants from our collections to, that have unique stories to tell. We have such a wonderful, unique flora in the Pacific Northwest uh, unique to to our part of the world. What's unique about the conservatory is that we have a we have the opportunity to have sort of a more kind of global uh, perspective in terms of of um, plants that we're highlighting from many different regions of the world. And so that brings in the cultural piece where we um, share this rich heritage. We're able to share the rich heritage of many different parts of the world. Uh, to uh, with the public. You were mentioning the con the contribution or the importance uh, of the conservatory and these kind of spaces in mm -hmm. community, and one of the principles that the Olmsted architects of of this beautiful greenhouse had when designing it was the belief that public parts are at the intersection between public health and ecological health. Mm -hmm. I cannot, uh, I need to ask you rather about your take and your experience with this um, as a as a person that has devoted your sure. life and your career to these goals? That's a, that's a wonderful question, you know, uh, that, that um, it sort of speaks to the reason why we exist. During the Industrial Revolution, when we were changing from a, an agrarian society to uh, more of an industrial society, people were, were flocking to urban settings to find work and... and Industrialized uh, areas. And yeah. Right, and so it became apparent really early on that, that uh, it was going to be important to set aside recreation space, set aside some of this beauty for the benefit, health benefit of the, of the people, and, and, but also to preserve uh, some natural space um, so that it didn't all just become developed and industrialized. To me, uh, philosophically, if you will, <laughs> it gets to, down to being able to help connect people uh, in, a, in this really heavily urbanized setting, uh, connect with nature again. To sort, tune you know, back so, to it. Right, sort of, sort of have a connection with, and then I just think it's really important, particularly for young people, for kids, that they have some connection, some sense of connection to the earth, you know, so that, that if we're expecting people to be concerned about the environment, we want them to be knowledgeable about it, we want them to be uh, good stewards uh, of it as we hand it over, you know, so, so, yeah, so a place like this uh, where you can come and enjoy uh, some beauty, incredible setting of this like 50 acre park mm -hmm. in the middle of the city where you can see mature trees and expanse of and plants Long. from all over mm -hmm. the world right. is in a way also kind of like taking a trip to some places that you may never right. go to. Right. And, and it was well said as the climate and ecological challenges continue um, to become more pressing, the preservation mm -hmm. of this space and of these kind of spaces is it's really vital. What question haven't I asked that you would like to answer, that you would like to share with uh, potential volunteers about this space and... Well, I think you've pretty well covered it. I could just go on all day about the value of, of community. And I think that's the thing. So whatever we're doing passionately, you know, it gets down to our interactions with each other and with, with people. And we're, in a very real sense, fostering community. And, and um, having people that live together feel connected and uh, engaged with each other. Yeah, what better way to build community than around yeah. the love for nature. Yeah. This right. is what we're building here, so come on and check it out. Yeah. And thank you for your time today. Okay.